This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 206 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Mulrose. Today, I am sitting down with Natasha Samuel, and we're going to be diving into creating Instagram reels that engage your audience. Now, last week, we had spoken about how to actually create Instagram reels that are going to be building your brand. Today, we're going to talk more about how to really engage that audience. So if you didn't listen to last week's episode, make sure you go back to that episode. But for now, I want you to sit with me and just take in all of the great information that Natasha offers. I also want to make sure that you hop over to the show notes and join in on her free challenge for Instagram Reels. That is how I found out about her and what she is doing. You're going to want to make sure that you take part of that and just dive into all of the great information that she offers. All right, you guys, let's dive in. Hi, Natasha. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to chat, Jenny. I am so excited to have this conversation. You were actually introduced to me by one of my clients, Veggie Save the Day, Amy Katz. Um, She told me about a challenge that you were doing, and I am just so excited to talk to you about Instagram Reels, um, just how to create that content that is going to actually engage your audience. Before we dive into that, would you introduce yourself and your business? Yes, absolutely. Um, And I loved seeing all the amazing results for that challenge. So I'm excited to dive in. Um, But I am Natasha, the founder of Soul Studio. And with my business, I really help business owners just feel confident and have a lot of fun with their Instagram strategy. Um, And I love storytelling on Instagram. I feel like there's so many opportunities with the platform. And so I definitely have a sweet spot in my heart for video. So when Reels came along, I was absolutely ecstatic. And I've been using it ever since. Perfect. So at the time of this recording, Instagram reels have been out for about two months, because this is coming out a little bit later than where we are when we're recording. Can you tell me how you were actually using Instagram prior to reels? Like were you using stories or IGTV or live or any of the other features? Absolutely. Um, I am always about, you know, using the parts of Instagram and kind of what the bandwidth you have. But I think if you can use all of Instagram, it really is what Instagram wants. They want us to be using stories and using video and posting on our feed and and using all the different components. Um, So prior to Reels, completely shaking up our world, I was posting on my feed about five times a week, usually like carousels, graphics, um, and just like photos. Um, And then I also was doing Um, pretty regular live streams, I'd say at least two a month, if not weekly or more than once a week. I love lives. I feel like there's such a fun way to engage with your audience. Um, And then I also really love IGTV for kind of longer form, high value content, um, like a tutorial or trainings or touring my office and just fun things like that. Um, And then I love doing daily stories um, during the weekdays. So I was pretty much using all of Instagram when and reels came to be. Which I think is smart, right? We all complain about, I don't want to have to go to eight different platforms. I don't want to have to do Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, whatever else it might be. Instagram has been very smart in the way that they have created content now, features within it that kind of are similar to other platforms so you can stay in all one place. Exactly. And I think that's why I kind of have been telling people like Reels is the real deal. Because if we think about how, you know, Snapchat kind of inspired stories and how Instagram has really ran with it and almost made it like a better version. um, I feel like, you know, Instagram definitely knows what they're doing with trying to take all the great things about all the other platforms and bringing it into one place. 
I agree a hundred percent. And that's like one of my favorite things. Like I love stories. Stories are my favorite. And I did love Snapchat, but once it was, became, it was part of Instagram. I was kind of like, eh, why am I going right. to go somewhere else? So it makes so much sense. So let me ask you this. Were you using TikTok before Reels came out? And if so, are you still using it? Yes. So I started using TikTok around March, probably like a lot of people. I feel like the pandemic inspired a lot of TikTokers. Um, And so I've been on TikTok since then. I haven't seen any, um, I think I have one video that has like 200,000 views, but other than that, pretty average growth. Um, But honestly, the main reason why I was on TikTok is because all of my followers will tell you, I was like, guys, TikTok is going to come on to Instagram and some way, shape or form. So it's important to understand all the trends, the little nuances, like the types of video content, like all the things that were really going on TikTok, especially related to influencers and brands. I really wanted to understand it and kind of do my research in a lot of ways. And I also just think TikTok's really fun. Um, So yeah, I was kind of doing it. So it was kind of ironic when Reels came about, I was kind of already a little bit familiar with it. Okay. I love that. Yeah. It was something where, and I'm a, based on seeing you, I'm guessing I'm older than you are. Um, so for me, TikTok was kind of like, I'd go in and watch videos, but I just felt so old over right. here. Um, so it wasn't something that I was on, but I love that you used it with the intention of thinking that it was going to come to Instagram. Like you were using it to know what to do when it came to the, what I consider like the real deal platform. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think it's so funny. I feel like every single person can agree that TikTok just makes you feel old. Like if you're not 16, you feel old on TikTok. You're like wondering like, what do these references mean? And and why are the videos like this? And why is this sound trending? Like there are so many, you know, just special parts of TikToks. So that's why I was like, I need to like get in the mind of everything that's going on. So when it comes to Instagram, I'm ready. Yes. So we all know that followers on Instagram are not necessarily a secret sauce, but rather it is engagement that matters. How are you using Instagram Reels to engage your audience? Absolutely. And with Reels, the, my favorite part about them is they get by far the biggest amount of engagement um, from all the types of content I've created. Just for like a reference, I usually get around like a thousand to two thousand views on an IGTV video um, and around a thousand views on my stories. But for most of my Reels, I get five thousand, if not upwards to ten thousand and twenty thousand. So I feel like engagement wise, because it has that opportunity to kind of get more viral and get new people. It's been great for kind of engaging new followers, not like they just see the video and leave, but they actually stay engaged with my content and start to kind of binge all the reels that I've created. But with my followers, I feel like I I really love to know, you know, what they're interested in, what they want to know, things that they're struggling with, things that they find funny. So I try to bring that into my reel strategy where like, I know one of my reels that performed really well as I was kind of like joking on how I'm like a social media manager. I create content, I write copy, and I am the worst speller ever. So I used like a funny sound and I talked about how like, you know, I was just bad at spelling. And everybody was like commenting and engaging and sharing. So I feel like with reels, you really can have a lot more fun and show your personality. And that was like stuff I was already kind of doing on lives and, you know, definitely on stories. But in reels, it's like in a bite sized way that people just like want to watch and watch and binge. So it inherently made where I get like tons of comments and likes and views on my videos. So smart. Yeah. And I think that one of the things that I've noticed with people that have had, whether their videos, the reels have come in the explore page is that it's always on brand for them. It's right. not someone that is talking normally about parenting. And all of a sudden now she's doing like dance moves by herself, like professionally, she's doing the dance moves with her kids. And like, it's funny in some sort of way so that they can actually connect with her. So it does give that sense of like really knowing the behind the scenes. And it's kind of the same way you said about how it was the copy and the spelling, like it lets them know, but it's still on brand for you because you're talking about what it is that you do. 
Right, exactly. And I think like one thing I want to kind of preface because we're talking about like funny videos and, and reels can be very entertaining, but they also can lean to be on like that inspiring side, whether you're like telling a story or they can also be just like really educational and like bite-sized nuggets. Like when people watch it, they're like, oh my gosh, I just learned so much in only a few seconds. So there's a lot of ways that people can really apply it to be relevant to their brand. Like you don't have to be insanely creative. You don't have to be a dancer answer, like all of these things, you don't necessarily need to see success on it. Right. So when it comes to then getting, so if you're doing tips and things like that, do you find that you're using calls to action like you would normally do in like a post into your feed? Or is it in the description that you're doing it as part of the real, like a call to action? What are you finding that is working in order to get people to engage with you? Yes. And a little bit of both. So I kind of like to structure like, especially when they were 15 seconds, my reels in like a certain way. So there's like one clip that's kind of an intro. Then I usually share like three steps, three hacks, you know, three tips in the center. So three different clips. And then, you know, the final, the fifth little clip that's a part of the video is usually a call to action, you know, asking their thoughts, asking what their favorite tip is, or something a lot more strategic, like link in bio to learn more or to enroll or to shop or, or things like that. Um, so I've definitely used reels to like promote my shop products and my course and the challenge and, and things like that. But I've also really been strategic with not only using the reels to inherently be engaging where people kind of want to talk more about it. But since reels are really bite sized, and they're small, I mean, they only are up to 30 seconds long, which is like the shortest piece of content you'll really see video wise on Instagram. So I really love using the captions to kind of give more details, especially if it leans to be on that more educational side, because you definitely don't want your reels to be like too wordy. Are you putting too many things into it? I know like a lot of people were guilty of that when it was first starting out. You're like, how much can I put into only a few seconds? But what I've really found helpful is like putting the main key takeaways, but really delivering the value in the actual caption and then always kind of ending off with a call to action because I think they're just so really important no matter what type of content, whether you're just wanting engagement or you're wanting new clients and customers. So one of the things that I have heard other people talk about too is that they'll see some engagement in the comments in their reels, but then their stories are blowing up because people are going from their reels to their stories and then DMing them and interacting even more over there. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing it as well? Absolutely. And I've definitely seen like reels are very shareable because, you know, you can share them to your stories and they're usually like around that 15 second mark. So they're perfect for sharing and kind of adding in commentary. So I find that whether it's story reshares or just people like, oh my gosh, I love this reel. If I'm not binging the reels, I'm going to go hang out on stories or even like I've seen an increase in my highlight replies too, which is really cool. So interesting. Yeah, I love when it, you can start to see the connections because everyone whines about the algorithm, of course, right. about how no one sees my stuff. But if you actually get start to get people to engage with you, you're going to see that the algorithm is actually going to help you. It's going to benefit exactly. you. You'll start seeing it everywhere you need to. So let's talk about, our, do you think hashtags are important on your reels in order to get more views and engagement? Yeah, so this is such a hot question. And reels are really, really new, especially when we're recording this. So there isn't any research saying you have to add them. They work really well. You know, it's still something I think a lot of us are figuring out. Um, so from the challenge, people did notice if they didn't add hashtags that their engagement would be a little bit lower. Um, and also, if you start to look at how hashtags look now, under the top post section, there's literally a reels feed that has all the reels that have those tags on it. So I think overall, especially if you're a smaller account, adding in hashtags is going to be really smart. And it's going to apply similar to a feed post, you know, put them in the actual caption or put them in the first comment. Either one is going to work really well. Um, but what I found personally for my page is oddly enough, my videos that have gotten, you know, 20,000 views and thousands of likes, those are the ones that of course didn't have any hashtags. <laughs> so so 
in a lot of ways, I'm unsure of, you know, how exactly they're working. But overall, I definitely don't think it can hurt your content. I think definitely test it out, try try different types of hashtags, try less hashtags. But most of the people in the challenge definitely did see that they were ranking for one in the top post, which is always really exciting. Yes. And I've had a couple clients that have said to me that they have noticed that their reels are on like the explore page for that particular hashtag. Like I have a client that's in the bookstagram kind of world and her reel ended up on like the top for that kind of hashtag. So that definitely does make a lot of sense. Um, which is always interesting because it is like you said, we're relatively new. I think we're not, are we even two months into reels now? I don't even know. If right. Two months yeah. In. It's almost two months. It's only been like a few weeks. So it's like, and it's already changing so much, you know, they've already changed how you edit and trim clips. Now they're changing where the navigation for reels is in the center of your navigation bar. So I'm sure even by the time this airs, we're gonna be like, Oh my gosh, it already has changed so much. Yes. <laughs> No, for sure. But they are definitely the thing that I love them. The recent thing that I noticed was that they're, the reels are easier to find. They actually have it down yes. in the menu bar so I can just hit reels because that's what I want to do. I just want to binge watch and see what are all these, you know, what are the different ways that people are using it? Because there are so many different, you know, from the fashion bloggers to like snapping and changing their outfits to, um, I was watching someone that does like, that's an author that was doing the characters from her book and her husband was dressed up as as them. It was just so many different things. Um, So it's great. What would you say is your number one tip if we were looking to get started with Instagram Reels today? My number one tip I'd say is kind of like create a plan because reels are very easy to like quickly create and start. And I think if you're that type of person, go for it. But I think with reels, we assume that since they're shorter, that they're not going to take as much time as like a feed post or a story and stuff, but you kind of want to create a plan. And so some things that you can kind of include when you're in that planning stage is first of all, figure out what content you can already repurpose. Maybe video that you can take, you know, a clip from. Maybe there's archived video clips that you can use like with music and a voiceover for a certain type of video. Or maybe just looking at, you know, what captions and stories and other types of content really got the most engagement so you can kind of create it into a completely different format and reels. Um, Because of course, you're probably going to get really inspired by what everyone's creating and what's trending on reels. But chances are you already have a lot of content that's ready to be created. So kind of like planning that out And then also kind of creating a little bit of a workflow. Um, I love to kind of outline my videos before I film. And that kind of helps me when I'm adding text later on, or when I'm actually writing the caption portion. Because of course, like we usually schedule posts, but with reels, they're kind of more in the moment and you have to do it within the app. Um, And then the other big thing is your cover photo. And of course, you can choose your cover photo for your reel from the actual video. But I always find that they're just not on brand. They're usually blue. Um, and I much prefer to actually just create my own. Um, so go into Canva or your favorite design tool and kind of figure out what template or what you want that to kind of look like for a cover photo. So it'll be as simple as plugging and playing. You have your idea, you make your outline, you make your cover photo and you film. So you kind of already have like a system and process. Um, so you're ready to really just create your reels and not worry about what am I actually going to post or how do I do this when I post? You kind I've already have everything set up. That is so smart. And I'm glad that you brought up the cover photo because I was curious, are you posting your reel to your feed as well then since you have the cover photo so it won't mess up your branding on your feed? Yes, I definitely recommend posting it on your feed. I know that's one of the small glitches. So you may or may not have that option. But if you do, I definitely find that it helps with engagement. Um, and having in that cover, make sure it perfectly matches your feed and your grid. So it'll it'll look great and branded. Yes. Nope. Such a smart idea. So tell me, do you have any resources that can help us with Instagram and even Instagram reels, especially? 
Yes, absolutely. Um, so I know we mentioned the Reels Challenge. So it was a 30-day Reels Challenge and it was live, um, but you can access the evergreen version of it. So with 30 prompts and then 30 extra prompts. And then I also created a little mini course around it. So if you're wanting some tutorials and lectures to learn more about how to access Reels, um, you can access that mini course. It's going to be called Lights, Camera, Reels. I love it. We are going to make sure to link to that in the show notes. I am super excited to be able to get that out to my audience because I know there's a lot of people that have questions because they get overwhelmed when it comes to new technology and using all the different mm-hmm. features. Um, so this is great. Thank you for that resource. Um, Natasha, where are the best places to connect with you? Yes, I'd say Instagram is definitely the best place to hang out with me. And I'm at Soul Studio Marketing on Instagram. That's where you can kind of check out my reels for some inspiration and definitely DM me and say hi. I'd love to chat. Um, And then I also do have a podcast called the Shine Online Podcast, where I've kind of talked to other experts about reels. And I give some other Instagram and business tips there. Fabulous. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me and share your information with my audience. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. This was so fun. All right. Well, there you have it. Natasha had such great information to really let us have an opportunity to understand how we can better use Instagram Reels. I have been saying it for months now, talking about the fact that Instagram really has taken all of the platforms and tried to make it one so that you don't have to go anywhere else to create your content. Instagram Reels is just allowing you to be able to create those TikTok videos, but that now are going to be able to build Build that audience inside of Instagram so that they can become clients, audience members that are going to engage by your products and services. You guys, as always, I appreciate you all so much for listening in. Be sure that if you are listening to this episode that you tag me in your Instagram stories, put a screenshot up, tag me at Jenny underscore Melrose, as well as tag Natasha at Soul Studio on Instagram. All right. If you have not already left a rating and review, I would so appreciate it if you took the time to leave a rating and review on your favorite podcasting app. But until then, until next time, I will see you all then. 